Hi, my name's Andy, uh, and this is a video about how to write a Java mocking framework. Uh, you wouldn't really do that, you'd use JMock or Google Mock or, or the new Fangle thing, uh, but it's interesting to see how you might do it. At least I think it is. Okay, so I'm going to talk about uh, what it's called, uh, what mocking is, then I'm going to show you some tests for the mocking framework, I'm going to show you how, how we make objects, how we track uh, what calls are made on those objects and how we return values from our mock objects. Okay, so let's address this question first. Um, some people think that uh, using mocks is really cool uh, and it means that you can write unit tests which only test one piece of code and uh, uh, nothing else gets touched, so everything's really nicely independent. Uh, some people think that using mocks is uh, really horrible. You end up with code that um, you end up with tests that are massively dependent on the implementation of your classes instead of on the external behaviour of them, uh, and they make you lazy and stuff like that. Uh, however, uh, we don't care about that. Um, I don't care whether mocks are any good or not. I think writing a mocking framework is obviously a totally cool thing to do. So let's do that. Okay, so what is mocking? Well, uh, when you're writing some tests, sometimes you're, the objects you're testing use other objects um, inside them. And if you've written your code in a testable way, you can pass in uh, fakes where, uh, where using the real object would be too hard or too complicated. Um, or if you feel that tests shouldn't test more than one class at a time or more than or tests maybe that's a bit too extreme um, but if you feel that your test would be not a proper unit test um, if you passed in this class which is obviously from a different area of your code so uh, what should you do about that well what you should do is instead of passing in the real object that gets used in the production code you pass in um, some other type of fake or mock, and a mocking framework makes it easy to make those things. So, uh, here's a bit of example code. Imagine that we want to test the axe class, which has this has a chop method. Well, instead of making an actual person and chopping their head off every time we're testing the code, let's make uh, an eye victim, uh, which is what the chop method takes. But let's just make a block of wood uh, which is a mock object, and the way we do that is we call this thing, this method that I've got here called new mock, and we pass it in the interface that we want it to be uh, a mock of, and it gives us back an instance of iVictim, and, and we don't have to define a concrete class that implements iVictim, which might be annoying and might have a lot of methods. Um, so this new mock method basically is magic and returns as an instance of iVictim. We can then call chop on it, and then we might also get some functionality like um, check what happened to wood when it was passed into this chop method. Maybe the cut method was called on it. Okay, so that was that was an example of what it might look like. Here are some tests uh, to demonstrate that our mocking framework works. So uh, this is our test class, test mini mock. Uh, we've got an interface here called my interface, which uh, we're going to use as the example interface in all these tests. And it has one method called my method. It returns a string. It takes a, a single argument, which is a string. So here's a test. Can make an instance. Um, so what this test does is it calls minimock.create. That makes an instance of my interface.class. So we put that into a variable called inst. And first thing is just check that it does create something that inst is not null. Uh, and also check that the thing we get back is an instance of my interface. Now, obviously, um, Java's type system has actually already done that for us because um, this cut, the first line wouldn't compile if it wasn't. Um, but uh, this is just helping us understand what this test is for. Really. Okay, so we can indeed make an instance of uh, an interface that we pass in. Uh, we can also track uh, what message got called on that object. So, <clears throat> uh, in the first line we create uh, an instance, just like in the previous test. 
um, and then we call a method on that object, this my method method. We get back the answer and we pass in an argument, which is foo. Now, uh, our mocking framework provides us a way um, of finding out what methods got called on an object. And the way it does it is this mini mock dot method calls. So when we call that, we pass in this instance of the interface that we got back from the create method. And that gives us an array of uh, method call objects, mini mock dot method call objects, which are basically just a record of what happened. Uh, and then we can make some assertions about them. So um, we can assert that the method name, the method, the name of the method that got called was my method. And we can see on the second line it was. Um, and we can also see, um, if I get myself out of the way, um, we can also see uh, that the that, that an argument was passed to that method, which was this foo argument. Okay, so um, so far we can create instances and we can call methods and check what methods got called. The other thing we might want to do is uh, our methods might uh, return. We might want our methods to return specific stuff so that our test can actually work. Um, uh, our test might need this mock object to do something particular, not just be a sort of passive soaker up of method calls, but also return stuff so that our test case can actually work. So here's the test for that. We call the create method, uh, we pass in the interface we want to create, but we also pass in um, some return values. And the way I'm doing that here is just uh, the name of the method and uh, what I want the return value to be when that method gets called. And if you call that method multiple times, in this case, it will return the same thing every time. We could have done something cleverer than that. Um, but this is really just to demonstrate how you do this stuff. So we're doing it quite in quite a simple way. So we create this thing, this instance called inst. We say when my method gets called, uh, return bar. Then we call my method in the middle there. And we get back an answer. Uh, we're ignoring the argument that's passed into my method in this test. And we make an assertion at the end that the answer that we got back from calling my method was bar. So that just checks that our mocking framework uh, works and we can pass back um, things from calling methods. Okay, so that demonstrates how the mocking framework works. Now let's look at how we implemented it. So first of all, that create method, minimock.create, looks like this. And there's a few things in here, but let's start with... Um, skipping the stuff with the dot dot dots and thinking about the other stuff. So we first thing we need is an invocation handler. We'll look at how we make one of those in a second. But an invocation handler is a um, something from the Java library um, that basically handles method calls. Um, and then the real magic is in the next line down called uh, where it says proxy dot new proxy instance. So the way this stuff works is that Java provides us this thing called proxy, which has this, this static method on it called new proxy instance. Um, and that basically does all the hard work. <clears throat> you give it a class loader. So in this case, we're just giving it the class loader associated with the class that we asked um, us to create an instance of. By the way, um, as you saw in the tests, we pass in an interface but the way we do that is we say interface name dot class. Uh, that makes a runtime instance uh, of this type of class brackets t that you can see um, on the first line. So confusingly, all the way through this code, even though it only works for interfaces, um, the 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 type of the variable is class brackets t. That's just um, class brackets t is actually um, either a class or an interface. And in fact, this code will only work for an interface. Uh, I've called the variable class, which perhaps I shouldn't have done. It's actually an interface. So anyway, we call proxy.newProxy instance. We pass in the class loader, uh, which we basically say, don't worry about that. Just use the one uh, that, that is associated with this class. Then we pass in an array of class objects to say that we want this proxy object that we're making to implement these interfaces. So this is the, this, the, this proxy class is doing almost everything for us. So you thought I'd written really clever code, but actually I'm just calling really clever code 
um, that's built into Java. So we're, we, we're saying that we want you to implement all these interfaces, but actually only one. This uh, is an array of size one with class in it, or class in it. Um, and we also pass in an invocation handler. So basically, we're saying to this proxy method, this proxy.new proxy instance method, make me something that implements this thing and use this invocation handler to handle what happens when methods on it get called. So then what we do is we've got back this, this object called ret, uh, which is an instance of class. Uh, and we trust that it is, so we can just cast it to t. t is the compile time type of, of the interface that we, we want uh, to return. We just cast ret to that because we know it is one of them, because we trust the proxy.new proxy instance method to give us one of them, and we return it. So that's how, that's the kind of core of how you, at runtime, take in um, a type that you want an instance of, uh, and you can make an instance of that type without knowing what it is. It's all done by that proxy class. Okay, so how do we keep track of what methods got called? Well, let's fill in some of the gaps in the code we've just been looking at. So what we do is we create an instance of invocation handler, which is um, an interface uh, in the Java library that goes along with the, um, the this proxy class. Uh, and we make an instance of it called tracking invocation handler, which is code we've written. Um, and that provides this method invoke. So here's tracking invocation handler. It implements invocation handler. It keeps track of method calls in this member, member variable, which is a list of method call objects called method calls. Um, method call, by the way, is a little class that we've written inside Minimark. Um, it's basically just, uh, uh, just holds onto data values. There's nothing clever and I haven't shown you it. Um, so the invoke method uh, is part of the invocation handler interface. We're implementing it here. It takes in um, the proxy object that, um, that the method call was supposed to be on, um, information about the method that got called, which is that that, that uh, class method is a Java uh, built-in class, and it takes in a, an array of the arguments that got called, and it throws some kind of exception we don't care about. Um, so here's, here's the implementation of uh, invoke. All we do is we add an object to that method calls member uh, by making a new uh, method call object, which is our little um, object that just holds onto information. And the information it holds onto is the name of the method, method.getName, and the arguments that are passed to the method. <clears throat> so again, method, uh, the method that was passed in here is an instance of this Java uh, built-in class method. We, all we want is its name. And then there's an array of objects which are its arguments. So we just store. We just store what happened. What happened was you called a method with this name and passed in these arguments. And then you return something that we'll get to in a bit. Okay, so um, keeping track of calls. Um, we've seen this test already. I'm just showing you again to remind you. So in all, what we do is we create an object called instance by calling the create method. And we've seen most of how the create method works now. Then we call a method on on that instance object and pass in the argument foo. And then to find out what methods got called, we call this method calls method. Uh, so let's have a look at how that's done. So here's the method calls method. It takes in this proxy object, um, which is an instance of my interface or whatever we're doing. Um, now what's interesting about this object is it's also an instance of proxy, which is this Java built-in class. So we can safely cast it to a proxy. Um, once we've got a proxy, we can call get invocation handler. We can call the static method proxy dot get invocation handler and pass it proxy. That gives us back the invocation handler. We're trusting the code that called us that they've given us a proxy object that's not only an instance of uh, proxy because it came back from the create method that we uh, saw earlier. But we also trust that it was created with the create method we called earlier, and therefore its invocation handler is a tracking invocation handler. So we can cast the return value of get invocation handler to a tracking invocation handler um, because we trust that it was made using that create method. And that would go wrong if someone's made some other kind of 
um, proxy and passed it in here. And we'll get a class cast exception. But anyway, so now we've got a tracking invocation handler out. Uh, well, that, that tracking invocation handler has this public um, field called method calls. Uh, which is a list of the method call objects. So all we do is we use the we use the two array method to turn that into an array and return it. So that's how we get the method calls out. Uh, we've got the we started off with the proxy object that was created by create. Uh, we got its invocation handler and then got the method calls out of the invocation handler. Okay. So uh, that was how we tracked what methods got called. Uh, uh, the other thing we need to do is um, talk about how we return particular values from particular methods. So remember, this is what the test looks like. We call the create method um, and we pass in these extra arguments that are the method name and the return value we want to get. And then when we call the method, we get back that return value. So. Um, uh, there's a little bit more code that I haven't shown you yet inside tracking invocation handler. And what that is, is a map of string to object called methrets, which uh, is basically a map of the name of a method to the object you want to return. So um, the tracking invocation handler constructor uh, not only takes in, uh, or rather, it takes in an array of uh, method names and return values um, which is how you end up being able to pass in those method names and return values to the create method. So basically the create method passes on that array of um, method names and return values into tracking invocation handler. Tracking invocation handler has um, some code in here which basically skips through that array two at a time looking for a method name and a return value um, and puts the uh, puts an entry into the map which is um, the method name, which we, which must be a string, uh, as the key, and the value is the return value you want. Anyway, the point about this, this is all um, the details of the code, but the point is, we've specified somehow whenever this method gets called, return this value. We've put the, we've put that specification into a map of string to object, and then when we have inside the invoke um, method, um, which is on tracking invocation handler as well as tracking what methods got called, which is what the method calls.add thing does. On that last line there, we we look it up in our map, methrets. That's a map of method name to return value. Um, we look up the name of the method that, that's being called at this moment and get the value out of the map and return it. So it's basically just keep hold of what you want to return and based on the method name, return it. So all, all, uh, all, as I've said before, all the cool stuff's happening um, because there's this proxy dot new proxy instance which takes in an invocation handler, and this is the code that lives in that invocation handler to make it return what we told it to return. And that's it. Uh, that's how you would write your own mocking framework. Don't write your own mocking framework. Use um, something like JMock or Google Mock or whatever's uh, right for your programming language. Um, but isn't it interesting that Java uh, lets you do something so highly dynamic um, that at runtime, if you know uh, an interface class, you can make an instance of it and then control what happens in each method call that happens. Of course, the problem is uh, it's really, really slow. So you can never use this in, in heavily used production code. Um, but in test code, it worked quite nicely. Um, uh, it's not too slow because you don't make that many instances in your test code, hopefully. If you do, it won't, probably won't work. Um, yeah, and also, yeah, I'll leave to another day the debate about whether you should be using a mocking framework at all. But if you do, uh, that's kind of how they work. Of course, they do cleverer stuff than that. Um, they can make uh, mock instances of classes where you're expecting an actual concrete class you can pass in a mock instead. Um, and they do that by hacking in the um, in the class files, um, fiddling with the bytecode. So I um, uh, don't fancy uh, getting into that. Um, but for the basic stuff of implementing interface, this is approximately how they work. Okay, uh, if you want to um, 
uh, get more videos there. Hopefully there's a subscribe button somewhere on your screen. or go to uh, the YouTube channel at the top there. If you follow me on Twitter, you'll see uh, links to blog posts, links to videos. If you follow my blog, you'll see um, things that I'm working on, uh, open source projects I'm working on, videos I'm making, uh, things I've figured out. Uh, if you look at artificialworlds.net, um, you find all, uh, links to a lot of open source projects that I'm uh, working on. And uh, see you next time.